Okay guys, uh, welcome back to another review. Today, I've got a bike from a company called Derwin. This is the Pioneer. These guys are also fairly new to the e-bike world. They do have two models to choose from. And the founder apparently, before he started his company, he test drove like a bunch of fat bikes or a bunch of mountain bikes and decided what needed to be fixed, what he liked, what he didn't like. Uh, his goal was making this bike as comfortable as he possibly could. So pretty excited to see what this can do. Now this bike falls underneath other bikes I reviewed in the $2,000 to $4,000 range. I've reviewed four other brands in this category. The Pioneer is going for $2,299, which makes it the second cheapest in this category, but it does have similar stats to the other brands. So let's see what it can do, starting off with the speed test. The Pioneer comes with a 750 watt motor, and that is powered with the 48 volt, 15 amp hour lithium battery. It's actually very easy to remove. It does have that handle on the left side. That is my favorite design. And it takes six to nine hours for recharge, which is one of the longer recharge times I've seen on a bike. It's time to see how that transitions over to speed. The bike does have five pedal assist levels with a top speed of 22 miles per hour. I'm gonna show you how fast each level can go like I usually do starting off with pedal assist level one. I've got my speed app open and I have 77% battery life. As you can see, this is an off-road trail. It is kind of sandy. I, hopefully it's long enough to do this test. So let's see what I get. One is nine, two is 12, three is 16. Four is 18. <laughs> the Pioneer has an aluminum alloy frame that weighs 75 pounds, and it has a weight limit of 350 pounds. Now, as far as weight, it is average in this price range. As far as carrying capacity, it actually outdoes the other brands by at least 30 pounds. Now, I'm 185 pounds and gonna do an acceleration test between pedal assist level five and straight throttle. There is a half twist throttle on the right side of the handlebars. Curious to see which one of those will bring me to the top speed the fastest. With pedal assist, the acceleration takes about a revolution and a half on the easiest gear to get going. But once it does, it really kicks into gear. It is a slower acceleration with the throttle, but it does engage as soon as you, you know, as soon as you twist it. So it's very prompt, but I felt like pedal assist had the quicker acceleration right off the line. The Pioneer has a range rating of 30 to 50 miles. For this test, I'm gonna be spending most of the time in the deserts. Uh, this is my favorite spot to come to now. I did start the tracking app at my home, so there is about a half a mile of paved road riding, half a mile to a mile. Most of the test is gonna be out here where, you know, where the bike belongs. So let's see how well it does. Well, this is pretty much a standard, you know, mid-step uh, fat bike. They built the battery into the frame, which I do like. It just makes it more sleek and stylish looking. So even though it's a big old fat bike, uh, it doesn't really, you know, give off that huge frame type of vibe. Haven't really done a lot with the logo. You know, it actually just has uh, the name of the bike and the logo on the right side. On the other side, it's just plain white, but it's a nice looking color. As far as geometry, really like the size of this bike for my frame of 511. I have the seats pushed forward as far as it will go, and I can easily grab the handlebars. And I also have the handlebars adjusted to the highest level. They've designed the bike to fit a rider 5'3 up to 6'4. And one thing that I've noticed as I'm, you know, taking off on this, <laughs> these uh, rocky roads is there's not a lot of vibrating, you know, even the kickstand, which most bikes, that thing just rattles like crazy. Uh, you don't get that with this bike. The motor is fairly loud though. It is one of the louder motors in this price range. So there is that, especially when, you know, climbing a hill or, going through some rougher parts of the trail, but it's very stable. Instantly, I could ride this without any hands and felt just fine. The handlebar size length is a little bit narrow for my taste. I would like to see another two or three inches for, you know, the size of this frame, but they are mid-rise, so, you know, it, it's not straight across. It does elevate them about three to four inches. There's wingtip grips and they are pretty hard. Not my favorite type of grip out there but they do have very nice aluminum alloy you know, levers and either lever cuts the motor as soon as they're pressed. 
It's got a seven speed Shimano shifter. It's one of the basic, you know, shifters for that Shimano makes. So nothing too special there. And it also has an Altus derailleur. It comes with an HQ comfort seat. And that is one of the better seats, if not the best seats for a bike in this price range. The pedal assist sensitivity, which is surprising, uh, it's not my favorite. There is a quite a bit of a lag from when I'm going, then I stop and then start pedaling again. It's about one and a half to two revolutions before the power kicks on. But when it does kick on, it does give a pretty good burst of energy. When on the high skier and pedal assist level, casually pedaling, I can still feel some decent resistance. It's the type of bike that you can still get a little bit of a workout, you know, on a flat road or even off-road uh, when on the highest pedal assist level. Now the throttle is instantaneous. I do like the throttle and it doesn't depend on the pedal assist level. So if you're on pedal assist one, you hit the throttle, it does give you access to full power. There's deadlock hydraulic suspension, which is very nice. I've got no complaints with the suspension. I've taken this, you know, at speed through some pretty crazy uh, trails and it does a fantastic job. Uh, you can lock it out and adjust it. I can tell it's a higher suspension. It is really just taking this trail very well and makes the bike feel pretty comfortable for being a hardtail. And one of my favorite features and things to do with this bike is, you know, it's light enough in the front and the suspension is good enough to where I can, you know, lift up the front tire going off a drop and catch a little bit of air, have a little bit of fun that way. And last but not least, it has Kenda Wearproof 26 by 4 inch tires. And these are some of the beefier tires I've seen. I mean, so much so that, you know, I see small little rocks and pebbles um, kicked up every now and again, especially when I'm going a little bit faster. Uh, it's got tremendous grip, really like the tires, haven't slid out very much at all. Range test is over a little earlier than I was expecting. The last 30% uh, goes very fast. Uh, I thought I rode bikes hard before. I'm taking that to a whole new level. Uh, I got 16, I think just about 16 and a half miles on this with over 1200 feet elevation gain, which is pretty good. That's a good elevation, uh, you know, gain for a ride. I pretty much throttled it the entire time, barely pedaled. It's just more comfortable of a ride standing up on this type of terrain. Um, and actually this, this wasn't too bad. Uh, there were some rocky sections. I just have fun or standing up and going fast. But if you had a nice, you know, cadence, an average cadence, popped it on to, you know, even three or four pedal assist, uh, I bet you could get uh, another five to 10 miles, uh, if not more. I had fast accelerations, hard stops, you know, everything they tell you not to do to extend the battery life, I did the opposite. <laughs> okay, this is the no power test and it is already a struggle. <laughs> I'm in the easiest gear and that's, this is actually a little downhill section here. It starts to climb right about here. Oh yeah. And uh, no, you definitely don't want to be caught out with a dead battery in terrain like this. It is quite tricky. There's no hill rating for the bike, but the motor does produce 80 Newton meters of torque, which is, you know, the, the, I think the average for this price range is 80 to 85. So it, it's up there. Gonna find some steep hills and see how well it can climb. Well, I got a good sized hill in front of me. If I had to guess, that's gotta be about 40%. Uh, I'm curious to see if this is gonna make it up. So only one way to find out. Slowing down, I'm getting a pretty good workout, but not as, uh, not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Oh, that was much, much easier. I've gotta find a different hill. Okay, so I was off quite a bit. That's 27% uh, at its steepest. Okay, this is much steeper here. Let's see what we can do. Oh, I'm already standing up. Oh, come on. Okay, nope, <laughs> ain't gonna do that. Woo. I don't know if you can read that, but that says 35.2%. It is quite, quite a hill and uh i only made it up well there's the bottom right there made it up about 
30, 40 feet. So uh, probably the, the hill climbing for this that I would guess would be about, you know, 23 to 25%. That's time for a brake test. The Pioneer comes with 180 millimeter hydraulic brakes. Gonna find out how well they do going down the same hills I just came up for the hill test. There we go. Yeah, and as you would expect with hydraulic brakes, they are nice and smooth. Woo! Stopping right there on the steepest part. Oh yeah. Haven't had any, you know, pulsating or noise or you know, squeaking. They are very nice. Well, let me give you an uh, overview of the screen and control pad. On the left side is where the pad's at. You have a up, down, and power button. Hold the power button for a couple seconds to turn on the screen. And that is one of the larger screens I've seen, 3.5 inches. And I actually like the look of it quite a lot. It just looks expensive and nice. And what you'll notice here is I increase the pedal assist levels. Um, that bar on the bottom is green. Level two is yellow. Three is kind of a yellow orange. Four is orange, yellowish. <laughs> and then five is red. So kind of cool how that changes the color as you increase in the pedal assist level. And all the information that you need is already on each screen. So, you know, trip, odometer, watts. To access the settings, just hold down the, you know, both buttons for a couple seconds. And then you can change the wheel size. You can limit the speed. You can change the brightness level of the screen and then the units. If you hold down the top arrow, then that engages the lights. And there is a 48 volts headlight, very bright and nice looking. And then for the walk assist mode, just hold down the bottom arrow and that tops the bike out at three miles per hour. Well, the Pioneer comes with an IPX6 waterproof rating, has free shipping in the lower 48, and comes with a one-year warranty. Well, overall, my favorite thing with the Pioneer is just how nice of a ride it is on some pretty tricky terrain. If you are looking for something to kind of tackle some, you know, some mountain roads and some ATV trails, this is a very good bike for that. If you want to pick it up, I've got the link in the description. Also the link to my website, electricrevolutionreviews.com. There you can find all my reviews sorted by price and capability. So if you need help picking or finding the right bike, be sure to check that out. Hit that like button before you go and please subscribe for the latest in electric bike, board and scooter reviews. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.